Um, I, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Prime Minister, members of Parliament of both houses, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to thank you for the invitation to address your august body. I consider this to be a singular honor, and I deeply appreciate the kind gesture. Your parliament is quite unique, a quite a unique body, which is playing an important role in bringing Tamil people of Sri Lanka together, uniting them in the drive for peace, freedom, and justice. The fact that this parliament has arisen is testimony to the determination, the fortitude, and the spirit of resistance that burns in the breasts of Tamils in Sri Lanka and in the diaspora. This August body demonstrates the great organizational skills and the creativity of the leadership of the transnational government of Tamil Elan. This gives much hope for a better future. Your assembly is meeting in an international situation characterized by rapid changes in almost every aspect of life. It is also full of uncertainties, great dangers, tremendous challenges, and opportunities. For those of us living in the third world, those challenges are even more pronounced. The most immediate issue is the global pandemic that has gripped the world. The spread of this virus is continuing and causing hundreds of thousands of deaths throughout the world. Its full impact has not yet been realized, but already we see serious decline in many of our world's largest and most important economies. It is believed to be threatening to begin a global recession. As at such times, the people of the developing world almost always bear the brunt of the austerity measures. On the other hand, co on the other on the other hand, COVID nineteen virus tells us how closely we are united. Unfortunately, some of the world's leaders seems to, seems to fail to grasp this reality. And instead of uniting our resources to, be, to get rid of the virus, some, in, some are engaging in petty squabbles. We are, all, we are almost also confronted with climate change. You yourselves, have been the victim of one of the worst natural disasters in history, the tsunami. What is new is the frequency and the force of hurricanes, droughts, tornadoes, and floods. And even up to this morning, I saw the destruction of the hurricane in India and Bangladesh, where poor people have been the worst hit by this disaster. On the social front, the inequality that exists between countries and within countries is threatening to tear the socio-economic system apart. Every year, the concentration of wealth and the growing relative poverty are getting worse. The gap between the rich and poor, the haves and have-nots, has become a wide gulf while we see the growing poverty we also see tremendous wastage taking place trillions of dollars are being expended in the creating super weapons the merchants of debt are instigating conflict in various parts of our world many are so dangerous that they can threaten human existence so add to this we hear talk of even militarizing out of space. It is in, in this very dangerous international climate that the Tamil people of Elam must conduct their struggles. 
it is in these circumstances that exist worldwide that you have chosen the best form of, strugg of struggle at this particular time. The peaceful means offers you the greatest opportunity to popularize and promote the legitimate interests of the heroic Tamil people. It will encourage greater participation of, of the masses in their just cause and beget international solidarity. Within the country, it provides the best possibility of organizing the people and in forging broad unity among the Tamil and other forces. I believe that the form of struggle that you are now engaged in will help you to build alliances with the democratic and peace-loving forces in other sections of the population of Sri Lanka. Your struggle for equal rights and justice have had its origin since the time of independence in 1948, 72 years ago. Your movement has acquired great experience and you are all steeled in the cause of the struggle for peace, justice and equality. From the time of independence, the nature of the struggle changed from being anti-colonial. This was because of the fact that instead of pursuing national goals, a new kind of colonialism developed. This was where the colonializers and the colonialized lived in the same country. Successive governments of Sri Lanka tried to turn the Tamils into second-class citizens. This was done by making laws to keep them permanently disadvantaged. The Sinhala Duty Act of 1956 was a powerful blow against the forging of national unity and de facto created two nations, one oppressed and the other an oppressor. This act led to the beginning of the marginalization of the Tamil people and the devaluation of most of the most fundamental aspect of a people's culture, their language. The Tamil language was relegated into an inferior status. Cultural institutions like the famous Tamil library was destroyed, a loss to all humanity. From then, the struggle became a fight for the right of nation to self-determination. This is a universal right recognized by the United Nations and other international bodies. The attack on the culture of the people and the lack of compromise led to one of the most brutal wars in modern times. Thousands of persons perished in the long war. Most, most of whom were Tamils. Here too we see the importance of forms of struggles. While the struggle was just, and even the armed struggle could have been justified, the use of individual acts of terrorism damaged the cause. Those acts of terrorism were used as a pretext to discourage, to dis discredit the national liberation objective and used to justify the massive onslaught on innocent Tamil population. The last stage of the war, the last stages of the war were particularly bloody, even savage. The estimate of death varies fairly widely. The most conservative figure put the death figures at 40,000, mainly innocent civilians. Some reports have it at 70,000. Much of what took place suggests that the war had genocidal features on, par on the part of the Sri Lankan armed forces. Even in the agreed no-fire zone, thousands were killed. Hospitals, schools, and other important infrastructure destroyed. Moreover, reports speak about, the, about torture and the di disappearance of thousands, while rape was used as a weapon of war. It is unfortunate, too, that this situation in Sri Lanka created conditions for a family dynasty to appear. 
It has resulted in many negative developments in social life. Some commi committee reports talk about the rise of corruption, nepotism, and day-to-day -day terror in the society. History has taught us that these circumstances, in these circumstances, dictatorship tends to flourish. And that is our experience here in Guyana as well. It sometimes does not occur in a single act, but the accumulation of actions, freedom and rights of people are gradually eroded as four steps. Among the first to be, to, to be on the mind is the right of the freedom of expression. That extends to arbitrary arrests of political and other public figures and the continued abuse of women, many of whom live in fear. It is extremely unfortunate that since the end of the Civil War in 2009, nothing much was done to investigate the thousands of reports of crime committed then and continues today. The international community must correct this at the earliest. This is even more necessary since the last election in Sri Lanka. One can appreciate the trepidation of the population of Tamils in your country as the current president was the Minister of Defense during the bloodiest period of the Civil War. During the bloodiest period of the Civil War, when most civilians were slaughtered. This is why the work of the transitional government of Tamil Ilan is so important. It is necessary not only to inform the international arena, but to build structures in Sri Lanka, to create formidable organizations, to foster hope of the people. In this endeavor, the need to build links with the freedom-loving people in Sri Lanka is as important as building international solidarity. You are not alone. The struggle of the Tamil is part of the struggle for peace and disarmament. It's part and parcel of the resistance of the Palestinian people and other oppressed the world over. International solidarity means a lot to our globalized world. Your victory will contribute to the cause of all exploited and oppressed. So too will the gains made internationally impact on your own struggles. Allow me to conclude by wishing you successes as you strive firstly for justice, for the crimes committed on your people, and for the freedom and liberation from national oppression. Once more, best wishes and let us forward to a better world. Thank you for your attention.